Sister Mozart here. Today I get to show you a new pattern that I've come up with. This is just a freebie, but it's really fun. This one is something I'm calling Stripey Diamonds. And it's basically one block, but you can rearrange it a couple different ways and get totally different looks. So the basic block is a diamond block, and I'm going to show you two ways to do that and then a few different sizes, and we'll talk about that um, here too. So I've got this pretty floral fabric. Now I have cut this as a six and a half inch wide strip because the one behind me is a six and a half inch diamond that I'm using here. So what I've got here is this large scale floral. I didn't want to cut it down too much because then you kind of lose some of the design. So I'm going to cut six and a half inch diamonds from this. So here I'll take the large diamond ruler and I just need to I just need to get myself a cleanup cut so that I have a nice 60 degree angle to go ahead and cut my diamonds. So I'm lining up the ruler on the strip, just off the end here, right here at the edge, and just clearing the salvage. Now, I've opened the strip to a single layer and put it right side up. So that way, when cutting angles, you get the most yield out of your strip. If you keep it folded, you get kind of an awkward piece in the middle. and. Um, you might lose some fabric there. Okay, so now I have this nice 60 degree angle to start with. So I'm going to scoot the ruler down the strip until my solid black six and a half inch diamond line fills right into the edge of that fresh cut. And I'm just going to cut. You could maybe fussy cut this if you really wanted to center some blossoms. That's a nice idea. I'm just going to go ahead and trim the other tip off there. Then I can move the ruler down the strip again and get another cut. So depending on how big you want to make your quilt, you could cut quite a few of those. Not enough to cut another one, but we'll save that for later. All right, so in order to surround your diamonds, because what we need to do is square them off to make a rectangle block. So it's basically a diamond rectangle. So I've chosen two different shades of green to do that. And here they are. So I've got my, my light one and my dark one. And in order to do this cut, I'm going to turn the dark pile upside down. You could keep it uh, right side up and then just orient your ruler differently, but I find it easier to just flip one upside down so I get mirror image cuts. So we'll start with start with the light one. Now these rectangles are six and a half because that's the dimension of my diamond. So they're six and a half tall by four and five eighths wide. Both of them are. You don't have to remember these measurements. I'm actually going to uh, link you to a tutorial I did on these blocks with the measurements all attached. So here I've got the ruler. Now instead of to the side like it was, I'm turning it top to bottom. So what I'm going to use for this cut are my triangle lines. These are, these are the dashed lines that come across the tip. So I am going to line it up on the six and a half inch triangle line. So I've got my flat tip here and the six and a half inch coming across the bottom here. And the center of the ruler has three lines, one solid right smack down the center, and then a quarter inch on either side are dashed lines. So in order for me to have a seam allowance, I'm moving it to the left dashed line. So there would be center, scoot it over here, that gets me a seam allowance. And this gets me two cuts just like that. Now, that's two layers. So I have four cuts there. Now this pile is upside down, so you can see I'm essentially going to get the reverse, just like that. So if I have my diamonds, these two would go here on either side, and these two would go here, just like this. So you'll sew these two on here, press your seams out. And you can sew these two on, press your seams out, and now you have a diamond rectangle block. So, my alternate block is done with stripes. That's the tutorial I'm going to uh, link to. So instead of just doing a bunch of flowers, I did an alternate striped block. 
that's this one here, out of a striped fabric. So I love to use striped fabric. So here was my starting fabric. And I'm going to show you quickly how I got the cuts to make the same diamond shape out of this striped fabric. So that is such a trick. These here. All right, so here I have got my striped fabrics. Same size rectangles, just as before. Six and a half by four and five eighths, both sides. But notice, my stripes go up and down on this one and side to side on this one. So they're the same size, it's just the stripes go different directions. So I will just do what I did before. Six and a half inch line, the left dashed line. Trim. Now in this case, these diamond or these rectangles, there are two layers, and I kept them wrong side together because what I need are mirror images. So that's what it's getting me, just like this. So what I'm going to do from here and here is I'm going to take that one and that one, this one and this one. So we're just rearranging, and this one. He goes there. So you get two blocks. You cut your rectangles like I did, and what you end up with are two mirror image blocks. So in this case, you sew this seam and this seam, press them opposite directions, and then you can join the two halves of the block together to get you a whole stripey diamond. Super simple. Same size cut and everything. Just with stripes. All right, set these aside, and now we get to do a layout. So if you've got your blocks sewn together, so here's, you get some idea, maybe I'll turn these to the side. I've got a stripe one, and then I can build. All the blocks get built the same. So even if they're stripes or flowers, your dark green goes in the same corner for both, and your light green goes in the same corner for both. So what you end up with, here's my flower, light, light, dark, dark. Here's my stripe, light, light, dark, dark, the exact same. So once these are all sewn together and I want to join them to each other, you can do an arrangement like this. And what will be left here in this void area where all the corner units come together is like a checkerboard diamond. So that's one layout. You do the whole thing that way where you just do row after row alternating each block and then it gives you this checkerboard diamond as your, as your corner unit. But what if you staggered it? So this is where it gets really interesting and like the one behind me. If I stagger it up just like this, now I get a trellis design, which is what is revealed here. So I actually have this done in smaller blocks, which I can fit on my, um, my mat here a little easier. So I'm going to grab those so I can kind of show you more of that layout and just how versatile it is. Like I said, these are six and a half inch blocks, and the ones I'm going to show you now are four and a half inch. So I have these little guys that I used this striped fabric to make. So fun for a kid, the four and a half inch size could be done with the mini ruler. So if you have the mini ruler, I've got the measurements needed for this size in the tutorial that I will link to. So here we have a whole bunch of blocks done with the mini ruler. And here, just like I said, if you lay out in alternating fashion, you get the idea here. And I did a solid piece or a non-pieced block that is just dots. So here to fill in where the corner units come out like a little checkerboard of 
turquoise and orange. This would be great for a kid's quilt. Fill in all the gaps. All right. So some rows. So this is your basic idea. But you could sew your rows together this way or this way, doing it this, just like this layout, where you get these corner diamonds coming together as a checkerboard. So what happens if we just scoot everything up? Every other row gets scooted up. So let's just do that here. Now, in this case, you have to piece your rows the long way. So this would be row one, row two, row three. And in order to fill in the top and bottom edges where you have half blocks that would be missing, I'll take some of these half blocks here. And this, when I did the, the, the stripy diamond cuts, instead of sewing both sides together, you just leave the middle seam open. So this would create a whole diamond block if you leave them in a half unit. Then you can fill in the top and bottom edge of your quilt, just like this. So now we have this trellis design coming through just like that. So fun. It's the same block. Nothing really changes. You just get these layout options that you uh, can play with and use up different scraps or stripes half blocks or no half blocks, it's up to you, and um, do something creative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to the tutorial I did for the striped block, and I'm also going to link to a, uh, an infographic that I've done for the size of diamonds and how, to, how many you can cut out of a strip. So depending on what size quilt you want to make, how many diamonds you're going to need, if it's the four and a half inch size, the six and a half, or even if you wanted to explore some different sizes, that can be done too. One thing that I didn't tell you, but it is in the tutorial, is in order to do these corner units for a four and a half inch size, your rectangles would be cut four and a half inches by three and three eighths. So that's the dimensions, but it will be in the tutorial too. So I hope you like this idea. I hope you find a way, a way to use up your scraps and do something kind of fun. It's a pretty great way to, uh, to use stripes too. Thanks for watching.